Bordello of Blood. That's right. Tim, one of our fantastic patron supporters and Snob Nation family members, uh, gave this movie to me to fix. It's Tales from the Crypt movie from the 90s. Uh, it was... It, you know, Demon Knights is a very special movie to me. They made four movies, like Sasha had said. Ritual kind of came a little bit later. Uh, the original Tales from the Crypt was in the 70s. These two movies kind of came out not too long after each other, back to back. It was kind of, you know, a little bit. I think it was on the height of the TV show, like right off the right off the end of the TV show. If not, it was like right in the middle, or you know, or towards the end, rather, I should say. And you know, Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood, two very different movies. They kind of connected them in certain ways, especially the key in it and both of them and stuff like that. Now, Bordello of Blood is a movie, it's a vampire movie where it is a bonkers, crazy, campy, cheesy sex romp of a movie. Demon Knight is a little more straightforward horror. That I think that's why I think I resonate towards it more. This movie was very much about the TNA and comedy. Dennis Miller, of course, being the star, he plays Rafe in the movie. He is a private investigator. Uh, er uh, Erica Alinea, uh, yeah, Erica Alinea is uh, the star of the movie. She, her brother, goes missing, played by Corey Feldman. He goes to this bordello that is inhabited by vampires. He gets turned. And so on and so forth. She goes to hire, she goes to the police. They can't do anything about it. They got stack of paperwork going. So she hires this private investigator. Of course, it's Dennis Miller. His name may be Rafe in the movie. It's just Dennis Miller. I swear to God, the guy didn't even have a script. He was told, you are going to be fighting vampires, but you're just Dennis Miller. That's all this movie is. I really enjoy this movie. It is not Demon Knight. Demon Knight is a good movie, in my opinion. Bordello Blood is just a fun crazy. If you're a fan of Dennis Miller in the 90s, you're going to have fun with it. If you're a fan of naked women everywhere, you're definitely going to have fun with it because they're everywhere. And if you're a fan of Tales from the Crypt, you're going to kind of have fun with it because it sort of is like a Tales from the Crypt uh, episode. Not really. And that, that's where my problem with this movie is, is... Demon Knight, I can see fitting within the Tales from the Crypt fold. Tales from the Crypt was a smart show, and it told smart stories. And yeah, they they had their TNA, they had their craziness, but it was never over the top. Sometimes cheesy, but they always took the horror seriously. Uh, they they had the comedy, but the comedy was there just to add that element. But overall, I really you know enjoyed what the the tone was it was is sort of like this this horror version of a uh, you know twilight zone you know sort of sort of show with all, all these twists that kind of they threw at you that was just really fun and i love the filmmaking team behind it, especially zemeckis leading it up at the time i just thought it was always a good time and uh joel silver and stuff like that and uh, um it, it was just it was a really fun time for that show when this movie came out it it felt so far out of touch from what Tales from the Crypt actually was that it just felt like they put the name on it and they put, you know, the Crypt Keeper in at the beginning and uh, the beginning and the end. And they didn't tell them what kind of movie they were putting in there. The only thing that adds any kind of like weight to it that this movie, this vampire movie could be a good movie is the fact that they added Christopher Sarandon and, uh, and Corey Feldman, who are veterans of two of the greatest uh, vampire movies of all time, The Lost Boys, hence why I'm wearing it, and uh, Fright Night, one of my favorite movies of all time. So while watching this movie, I was thinking about it. I'm thinking about how do you fix this movie? Well, first and foremost, the first rule of any horror comedy is in horror comedy, you have to take the horror seriously. And this does not. This makes a big joke of it. This makes a, this felt more like a National Lampoon's movie with a horror element than it did a Tales from the Crypt. A, they should have adhered to what Tales from the Crypt was. You know, they should have... The twist wasn't even that good. Um, you know, you saw it coming from a mile away. And so you, you get that... You, when you walk away from a Tales from the Crypt, you got to be like, ah, that was cool. 
you know, that was awesome to see. They didn't have that in this. So they, you know, I wish they had that element. Like, this is the show that gave you one of the greatest vampire episodes of all time. And that was when the frat guys go into the haunted house. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. We actually talked about Brian, with Brian Krause when we interviewed about him uh, with this. One of my favorite episodes. So, you know, with this movie, how do you fix it? A, unfortunately, as much as I love him, you got to get rid of Dennis Miller. You got to put somebody in there who's going to take this seriously. He's going to take the horror element seriously. Now, if you were going, and you got to pick a tone. If you want horror comedy, that's fine, but you got to take the horror seriously. So that means all the surrounding people need to take need to be serious about it. So it, the preacher is real deal. He's not a hokey preacher. You know, Chris Sarandon is an amazing actor, and he's just playing this character like, come on really like what are we doing here like this seems like such a joke we need a i'm sorry erica linian was not a great actress at the time she's beautiful to look at not great for a leading role she did not do a great job in this role you need somebody who could play the role i thought angie everhart did a great job in it and if she had a chance to play it up and play it more horrific she could have done that well if it was taken seriously so, and she could have still played that comedy element to it like she did, but you needed a guy there who was taking, who, yeah, maybe was making some quips and stuff like that, but was having fun. I would have actually taken the private investigator out of it and, or if, in, or just, I mean, honestly, if you're going to keep the private investigator add an actor who works, Dennis Miller doesn't work. He's, he's, he's a comedian. He's not an actor. What else have we seen him in? This is really it. You know, a couple other things, you know, besides SNL. That's really it. So find somebody who's going to be in it, who's going to take this seriously. If you want to keep the TNA, fine. I just thought it was overdone. It was just a little too much. And, you know, because, like, when I'm watching this movie, I didn't need it. Like, it's it's like a teenage boy's dream, and I, I didn't want that. I want to watch this movie. I want to have a cool vampire movie that I'm getting into. I understand it's a bordello and you can have the, you already have very cool practical effects going on in this. Add to that some more because the TNA is overshadowing that. You know, you could have had something like from dusk till dawn where, yeah, you have TNA and that, but then they turn into cool vampires and you have cool prosthetics and stuff like that. Why wouldn't they do that here? Now, budgetary, you can say that. But that's why it felt like it went in for the joke. Now, if you want to do it in a budget, fine. You keep them with the fangs. You can do that element to it. But and you can just keep the you know the prosthetics and, and things like that to the kills. But take it seriously. Have some fun with this. Like take the horror seriously is what I'm saying. I hope you guys realize where I'm coming from. This, but just take the horror aspect of it seriously. If they had done that, you could have kept pretty much every element to this. And have all of the outside characters in there. So he can still be funny, but it can't be Dennis Miller just being sarcastic, making up lines funny. It's got to be somebody who comes in there as acting. And it's like, I'm in this situation, and maybe comedy is my way of coping with this situation. Funny. You know, an Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, sort of funny. Or meet the Wolfman, sort of funny situation. <clears throat> that's how you have to handle this. This is the way you get into it. Tucker and Dale versus evil. It's so outrageous. It's hilarious at certain points, but you feel the danger. I never felt like that was a danger for this. I never felt like he was any real danger. Like he's going to be fine. He's sarcastically talking his way out through it. So I feel like if you're going to fix it, you got to replace the main character. If you could get a bigger budget, great. But if we're going to stick to what the budget was and what it, where it was at, you change up, I would change the main actress uh, in the movie, Erica Linnea, just, she wasn't strong enough for it. Um, keep everybody else, except for Dennis Miller, get rid of him too. And just put two strong actors in there who can pull off the horror comedy vibe if that's what you want to go for, especially because it is a Tales from the Crypt movie. This felt like a script that came in that somebody wrote and they just tacked on to a Tales from the Crypt. It just didn't feel right. It didn't work. 
very one very cool thing you know is uh in the vignette where we are talking we see the crypt keeper and he's talking to us it is william sadler playing the mummy and i thought that was cool because william sadler is a mainstay in, in tales from the crypt and you guys he was in demon knight as well he was one of the main stars so uh, i would love to know what you guys think did i fix the movie do you think it would have been better if it was in, had that element i don't want to remove anything else i thought the lilith part was you know taking over i thought the church um supporting the bordello was great you know it added like this different element to it um you know everybody else kind of playing it up uh you know it was a lot of fun but yeah it, it's just when you had not such a strong actress playing against this guy who just seems like he's making a joke of the whole time it just didn't seem right to me but it is what it is sasha says uh, demon knight was more straightforward a horror and not comedy Okay, watch the Billy Zane scene again. <clears throat> Billy Zane scene again. Uh, the reuse of the key, I think, needed taken out. Yeah, I do too, because the key was so important in Demon Knight, and they just kind of treated it like it was nothing. But that's what I felt like this whole movie did when you had Dennis Miller there and in, in, in the whole thing. It just didn't work. I, you know, I think if you just replace those two main characters with two stronger actors who could step in and take this take the role seriously and again still play it for last you want to still have a comedy fine but if you had played this for horror it could have been so much better i think it could have been it could have been it would have gone down as one of the best vampire movies of all time if you had played this really well just something different and we would be talking about that movie right up there with lost boys or fright night I really, truly believe that. But I would love to know what you guys think. Sound off in the comments. Let me know. Uh, you know, if you're watching this in the clip or you're watching this or listening to this on the Sin Sounds podcast, I really, truly appreciate it. Uh, Chris says, that is exactly what I thought. Miller got rid of the seriousness. Uh, remind me of more Transylvania 6500 vibe. Yeah. And and that's, to me, that's the problem. Like, if you if you make it too silly, it's just never going to work. But, guys, I, I want to thank you so much for watching and listening to the Sin Sounds podcast. Uh, we do this every week 7 p.m live and if you can check it out live join in in the comments we'd love to have you be a part of it if you can't we would love for you to listen to it again rate review us like subscribe to the youtube channel truly appreciate it we have lots of great videos and stuff on there um we have lots more to come so i can't wait for you to check out and see what's going on uh if you guys are um interested we are affiliated with entertainment earth they have lots of great stuff if you collect please go check them out they have some very cool stuff. This Batman that they have right there is very cool. Um, go check them out. If you use our link down below, you're going to get a discount. Uh, you can use that discount. Plus, there's other discounts available as well, especially if you spend over $59 or more. You get free shipping. Uh, yeah, appreciate you. We also have discounts for Noom, Skillshare, things like that. You can message me, and I'm happy to give you the links for that. Uh, I have lost... 75 pounds now since last year since i've been on noom i don't know if you guys can tell but i have been sharing it on social media and stuff like that i know i'm still a big guy but i'm still working on it but 75 pounds is not too bad noom has been working out pretty well for me it's been helping me with my meals my meal prep uh has been helping me like deal with like what i'm going to eat what's good to eat and things like that so i want to thank you guys again for so much for watching i really appreciate you um you were all fantastic thank you all it's been a kind of tough couple of weeks you guys have really supported me. You've been there for me. And, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, please go check out our Patreon. Go check out our Discord. Uh, go check out our snobsmerch.com. We have lots of great merch there, and we have lots of great merch, lots more merch coming out soon. And, uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Until next time, I'm Mick Manhattan. I love you all. Thank you, Snob Nation, and I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Take care.